90 Day Fiancé needs these 13 cast members back now. Over the years, 90 Day Fiancé has introduced viewers to various characters. Countless people auditioned for the franchise, spilling all of their drama. But only some have a dramatic story or larger-than-life personality that producers think is the right fit. Some people even make it onto the show, but then disappear. We can think of a baker's dozen, or more, really, 90-day alums who should return to our screens ASAP. John McManus Though he sometimes played an antagonist role in Patrick and Ty's story, John endeared himself to viewers. He's still the guy who flipped a steak onto the kitchen floor, who was downright belligerent at times. But fans aren't saying they necessarily want the guy for a roommate or a brother-in-law. John is entertaining. Some still don't even remember Jibri's name and refer to him as Sparkles. Fans celebrated seeing John join the cast of Pillow Talk in the latter months of 2022, but there's a hunger for more. Could John be a candidate for 90 Day, The Single Life? What is this guy like in a relationship? Larissa Lima This 90 Day Fiancé legend has been off the show for a few years now, and many fans still have questions about her Cam Soda firing. Since departing the franchise, Larissa has raked in a small fortune on OnlyFans, has moved multiple times, always to and from Vegas, tried dating in Colorado Springs, and has continued to fascinate. Oh, and she's gone up several cup sizes. And then several more, by the looks of things. She's one of the most polarizing figures in the show's history. Larissa doesn't need the show's modest payout, and she and 90 Day did not part ways on good terms. But the show doesn't have to stay on her wrong side. Remember what happens to any who is against the queen. Imagine Larissa on 90 Day, the single life. Kalani Fagata. We may be being a little goofy by including Kalani, as many fans suspect, she will soon return to our screens anyway. But Kalani is so funny, and while so few things about her life are relatable, growing up an American of Samoan descent, growing up Mormon, losing her virginity on vacation in her late 20s, getting pregnant, immediately getting pregnant again, becoming a reality TV personality, need we go on, she has a lot of common sense responses to things. Her response to Angela's infamous flashing incident at the tell-all, asking Brandon Gibbs how he liked his first visit to a strip club, still makes us chuckle at random moments. But Kalani's sensibility in other areas sometimes makes seeing her stick with Asulu much more surprising, even when he refuses to grow up. Maybe Asulu has grown up, and we'll see them soon on Happily Ever After. Or maybe Kalani could show up on 90 Day, the single life as a single mom co-parenting with her ex. Either way, a Kalani comeback could be fun for viewers. Brittany Banks Not a fan favorite by any stretch of the imagination. In many ways, watching Brittany's time in Jordan and how the fandom responded to her experiences helped many people understand the worst impulses of viewers and how 90 Day caters to them. With that in mind, we wouldn't mind if Brittany decided to avoid this franchise forever. She'd be well within her rights. That said, she has such a larger-than-life personality. She's entertaining, and her decisions are nothing short of catastrophic at times. She could be much fun on 90 Day, the single life. Debbie Aguero This 67-year-old artist did not find her happily ever after with 24-year-old Usama, and viewers breathed a sigh of relief. But we're glad she did this season because we all met her. It's one of the rare instances of 90 Day viewers setting aside the fandom's glaring misogyny problem long enough to enjoy a woman's eccentricities rather than hoping to see her punished for them. Debbie is folksy, stylish, and strong-willed. Her paintings are beautiful, her jewelry is impossible to miss, and her one-liners are superb. Look, we're not saying that we want 90 Day to subject her dating life to more cameras on the single life. Instead, we'd like to see her on Pillow Talk. Rosemary Vega Some fans call her Big Ed's first victim, which is what many think of her. She introduced us to Ed Brown's type, struggling single moms younger than Ed's daughter. We watched with horror as Ed lied to her repeatedly, scolded her, and showed the world what a piece of work he was. Then, after she dumped him over another lie, he outed her to the world as bisexual during the tell-all. 
Rose turned that barrel of lemons into a thriving lemonade business, using her newfound fame to make more money. We wouldn't hate seeing her on 90 Day, the single life, so long as she never has to share a tell-all with Big Ed again. No one deserves that. Brandon Gibbs and Julia Trubkina Now that Brandon has had his first visit to a strip club, again, it's just a joke, an ill-behaved grandmother screamed and bared her breasts at a tell-all without facing repercussions, he and Julia have just been going along with their married life. We already saw them in two seasons, and maybe that's enough. But Julia was so funny and memorable that she'd be a delight to see again. And while we wouldn't say that we want to see Brandon's walking, talking, just no mother-in-law post of a mom again, Betty Gibbs fulfills the antagonist role in their storylines with Gusto. These two could merit another season of Happily Ever After. Emily Bieberly and Kobe Blaze Okay. Bear with us because we know that many people hate Emily even after some came around during the tell-all. You know the viral stories where someone is breastfeeding their baby and some unhinged stranger makes a scene trying to shame them over it? Well, a specific vocal segment of the 90 Day Fiancé fandom decided to audition for the Karen role in that story when they saw Emily and they nailed the part. But between how some softened on Emily during the tell-all and how Emily and Kobe seemed very happy when they married, we'd love to catch up with them and see how they're doing with their kids. Yes, kids, plural. A season of Happily Ever After? It could be so cute, but if fan hate has soured them on reality TV, that's more than fair. Caleb Greenwood This guy abruptly disappeared from his season, not because of anything he did. At the time, his lady love became embroiled in a racism scandal. We're suspicious of old social media posts returning to haunt people, but Elena Kasha's were bad enough that removing her was the right call. Mike Burke's were also abhorrent, but production didn't bother to remove him from that same season. Anyway, Caleb could be fun to see on The Single Life. Maybe he's not as entertaining when he's not lounging in bed with Elena, but many viewers would enjoy seeing him again. Emphasis upon seeing Ella Johnson This country girl was not having a good time on her season and there was a reason for that Johnny never showed Not during her season not after The man canceled and postponed at every turn It's not that he didn't have good excuses He and Ella were running out of reasons to keep trying to make it work Ella spent much of her season crying, but it doesn't have to be that way We'd love to see her again and search for the karama of her dreams again. Maybe she'd have more luck dating someone in the U.S. on a single life than she did dating a single dad halfway around the world. Randy and Myra Jen Betcher's friends Randy and Myra have not been fan favorites during season four of The Other Way, but that doesn't mean they aren't fantastic friends to Jen. They're asking the questions that she won't and doing the snooping that she can't because they care enough about her to make sure that she's okay. We're not saying these two should have their own 90-day seasons. But we do want to see them on Pillow Talk. Remember their bit where they have opinions about other couples at the tell-all? Please, I want to hear what Randy says about Big Ed, TLC. Are you listening? Please. Caesar Mac. We will keep this simple. Is Caesar living out his throuple gold dreams with two Ukrainian women? Natalie Mordovtseva gave him hell for that. We're not sure why, since it's not like he's dangling visas over their heads, they already had them, but who knows how Natalie's mind works, and maybe she's just prudish about polyamory, but many of us are curious to see how it all worked out. Or, you know, didn't. Caesar has not always been lucky in his quest for love, and we'd like an update. Tim Clarkson and Meliza Zeta Even though Tim had to leave Colombia to work, he could not legally work in Colombia. He and Meliza did not stay apart. And despite a breakup, they reconciled. They're now living in the United States. Oh, and they had an actual human baby. While we'd miss seeing Meliza's brother and their friend, David, catching up with them for a season of Happily Ever After. To showcase their lives together in Texas would be amazing. 